Hello and welcome to this video on programming in Python. This is part of the IGCSE computer science series of videos and in this video we are going to be exploring how you can program a bubble sort in Python. Now that we have explored how one and two dimensional lists work, we want to now have a look at how we're able to sort data in the list, in the list whether that be ascending or descending. So I want you to consider this list here with these numbers in red. If we wanted to sort this in ascending order, so it is small to big, and if these numbers were in a list, we need to explore how, we, how would we actually be able to set up and then sort the numbers in this list. Now, the concept which I am going to introduce to you allows us to use both letters and also numbers within a list. So this technique is working if the list is predefined or not predefined, like the one you can see on line number two. And this works to sort both numbers and also string values within a list. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this in the console window on the right. And I'm going to firstly talk you through how this is working. So we are being opted to enter a string value here. So I'm going to enter daemon and then set and then rob and then adam. So we can see here the loop is asking us to enter four different values. So it's iterating a total number of four times. Now, the next thing which is happening on line number six, we have got max index, which is set to four. This is the total number of times that the loop is going to iterate. And this number needs to match the number which, is, which has been set within our for loop. Now, to start with, we are going to use a counter, which is called n. You can give this a more meaningful name if you want. And we've got n is equal to max index minus one. So the loop will go from four to three to two to one. So it's going to allow us to count backwards and identify when the loop should finish. Now that we have explored this, the next thing we are doing here is we are setting, setting up a Boolean variable. And this is a concept which we explored in the last video on lists as well for variable validation. Now this Boolean variable is going to be used to terminate the loop. We don't want the loop to continue to iterate if the data is already in ascending order or alphabetical order. So we've got our while loop, so while no more swaps is false, we know that it is false because we have set that on line number eight. And then we're automatically going to switch that Boolean variable back to true. And what will happen now is it's going to now work itself through this for loop. So we've got for j in range n. So that's going to identify where we are at within our loop. This has been set to four at the beginning. We've then got print we are counter j. So we know where the loop is at. And this is going to go automatically from four to three when we enter or press enter in the console window. And then we get to this if statement. And this if statement, if you're familiar with lists, you should remember they start at index zero. So you've got for my list j. So my list j is going to look at the first value within the list or the first piece of data, which is going to be daemon. And it's saying, does daemon come after my list j plus one? And the answer to that question is going to be no. And the reason why that is no is because D does actually become before Z in the alphabet. So we're not going to copy any data across to temp as these values, they don't need to be switched. We're then going to print the following value is in temp. The next thing that will happen here is if this was to be true and it is false at the beginning because D comes before Z, we would do my list J is my list J plus one that would move the cursor to the next place within the list and then we would copy and paste whatever is inside temp to my list j plus one now i'm going to press on enter for now and let's have a look at the result of our list we've got we are counter zero 
we are counter 1, the following value is in set, and that is coming from temp. We haven't actually had to move anything from the temp value except for set. We haven't put daemon in there, nothing has been switched. Print statement number 2, we've got the following value is set, and we've got we are counter 0 and 1, so nothing has been swapped here. But when we get down to Rob, Rob is going to be put into the temporary counter because Rob needs to be switched and put before set because it should go D, R, Z. And the last value which is going to be put into temp is going to be Damon because Damon also needs to be switched uh, and also uh, put before uh, Rob. So we should have a final order of Adam, Damon, Rob, and Seth. Now coming back to our code over here, what we have is for index in range 4, the 4 items of data, we are then printing the list which has managed to sort Adam, Damon, Rob, and Seth. Now this is a very short video on bubble sorts and this is something that I will be walking through in class and if you are somebody who is watching this video and if you are not one of my students obviously do drop me a message if you're not really sure what temp is doing and if you're not sure how the boolean variable is working to terminate the loop hopefully at this point in the course you have a good understanding of how lists work and how we're managing to sort this from A to Z. As I said this concept will also work with numbers and it will work with a defined list and also a pre-defined list as well. Thanks for watching and looking forward to seeing you in the next video.